Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Uh, welcome to our second episode of the Publishing Dialogue. And we have with, here, with us here Hope Bollinger, uh, one of our very own authors. And I'm going to hand it over to Akriti to tell us a little bit more about Hope and her background. Great. Thanks, Pranika. So for our listeners and viewers out there, Hope is a content editor and has been a published novel with many titles to her name. I think at a very young age, she's worked in many facets of the publishing industry, writing for magazines, journals, uh, writing proper fiction novels, as well as working as a literary agent and editor herself. So that's quite a lot of work that she's been up to. And I'm going to now turn it over to Hope to tell us a little bit more about herself. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for the introduction. I mean, I think I kind of covered it. Uh, I am 24 years old, have been in publishing since I was about 16, kind of have dipped my toes into a little bit of everything. So I have about 14 uh, books that are either under contract or out already, and then about almost 1,200 bylines in various publications, anything from like poems to articles to plays, not screenplays. I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> Um, and then I work um, full time as a content editor for an online publication. So if there's anything to do with writing, I'm probably going to try it at one point. Wow, that's that's great. That, and that that's so many feathers in your heart at such a young age. I mean, you your love for writing is something that's quite inspirational. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got started off into the industry and, you know, um, what was your journey there on? Yeah, so it's actually kind of a weird story, not not like your typical, I guess, author origin story. So I, I've always been writing, but how I wanted to get into publishing was back in high school, I had a friend who was writing novels. And I always thought this friend was crazy because how you just sit down and write 300 pages at a time. But, you know, being friends, I decided I wanted to talk about something other than the TV shows that we watched. So I decided to give it a go. I got bit by the bug and then I couldn't stop. Um, and then in high school, I realized really quickly that publishing has a lot of gatekeepers. It's really hard to break into. So I decided I wanted to kind of sneak my way in to help other people also find a way to get in. Oh, okay. That's nice. Very interesting. So you started off as an agent and then sort of uh, made your way up, I guess that's the right way to put it. Yeah, so I, yeah, I met an agent when I was about 19 years old at a conference, ended up doing an internship with them. But yes, I, I try to find ways to kind of, yeah, sneak people in as like a secret agent, I guess, <laughs> into the industry. Um, but yes, because I figured if I can make it, then I can figure out ways to help other people make it too. Um, and honestly, that's why I really love saga fiction is because it's offering authors a really cool way to get into the industry and to have their stories shared. I know there's authors who are seasoned as well as authors who are new. Um, and I love, I love that we're exploring new ways to publish. I love that it's an app. I think that's super cool. Um, so I love that we're trying to figure out new ways to have people's stories be shared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Okay. See, I think it's quite interesting that you speak about how difficult it is to kind of break into the industry. Just what kind of pillars did you have to break through, you know, especially being someone who was so young? Oh, yeah. And honestly, I'm sure you both can speak to this, but ageism is definitely a thing in publishing and on both ends of the spectrum. So people who yes. are older and people who are younger mm -hmm. have usually a harder time trying to convince publishers that their work is just as worthy as someone who's maybe, you know, 40 years old mm -hmm. in the industry. So, yeah, that's definitely a pillar um, as a student trying to convince agents and publishers that my work was worth their time. Um, sometimes money can be a pillar. Uh, we don't often talk about classism in a publishing, but it can be a thing where, you know, oftentimes to get in front of an agent and to get them to really consider your work, you have to have it edited or you have to meet them at a conference and those things often take money. So I appreciate that the industry is pushing back against that and trying to find alternative ways for people to be able to get in front of agents. I, I especially Twitter pitch parties was I saw y'all were yes. on yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I appreciate that there there's ways that the industry is kind of pushing back against a lot of barriers, but mm -hmm. there definitely are ways to go for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, that's actually great advice. Yes, definitely. There are uh, lots of means for young budding authors to sort of make their way into the industry. And yeah, some some ways, as you said, are conferences and, um, you know, just pitch parties like uh, Twitter, Twitter is the most helpful handle, I think, that um, mm -hmm. we have. So anything, um, since we're talking about Twitter and social media, would you like to tell us a little bit about your social media strategy as an author? Because you're so, so active on all platforms yes. and um, you have a great author profile. So something about that. <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you. And also Saga has an amazing social media <laughs> platform and strategy. I'm loving everything I'm seeing, especially from Instagram. Um, so, I mean, I think the best thing is just to be authentic. I think it's really easy to want to be someone else that you follow or really want to copy what others do. Consistent posting can be helpful, but sometimes <laughs> sporadic posting can also be helpful. Just kind of figure what works best for you and just be you there's a baseball movie and i can't really quite remember what the title is it's probably going to hit me after this whole thing um but um there's a quote saying if you build it they will come so just mm -hmm. be yourself and the right people are going to come to you if you're consistently just being you oh, that's, i think great advice being you is the best thing you can do on social media just authenticity speaks for itself but um great i actually wanted to know more about your job as an agent since you've worked in that field, how how do literally agents respond to pitches coming in and how do they commission manuscripts? And I think this would be helpful for any um, young authors also listening to this if they are wanting to get in touch with agents. So yeah, can you tell us a little bit about that? This is a really great question. So I worked in the agenting world for about three to four years. So, and I wanna say agents usually get, they, I mean, they get thousands of submissions every single year. So usually someone will submit either kind of a cold call submission where they just submit to you whether you haven't met them before or not, or they may have met you prior and then you suggested, okay, send it to me. It sounds like an interesting project. So what I could talk about is some things that I really actually really love seeing in submissions. Uh, versus kind of what sets apart a really good submission from a submission that an agent probably will turn down. So I would say the biggest thing is I want to know that the story is a really good idea, really unique. Um, I, I really love something known as a high concept idea. So something that everyone says, oh man, I wish I would have thought of that idea because it sounds so cool. That's usually a big thing. The writing itself, um, usually that first chapter has to be really good. A lot of agents say, send me three chapters, but if that first chapter isn't amazing, they probably will turn it down. But if it is really good, they'll want to keep reading. And then actually the author themselves is a really mm -hmm. big factor. You could be a really good writer, but if you seem like you don't take feedback very well or mm -hmm. that you've mm -hmm. sworn off all social media altogether, um, it usually can indicate, okay, they may not be the best person to work with for me. Um, but yeah, so those are usually the things is kind of who is the author, what are, are they presenting to me and how are they presenting it to me? No. Yeah, that's a very interesting process, very in-depth and detailed, definitely. And then to look at the flip side, how do you work with the publishing houses? How do you pitch the authors to the publishing houses and what's that process like? This is this is a really great question. No, I love I love diving into this. So agents usually have a number of contacts that they already have connected with in the industry. If you run into an agent who only uses the same 10 contacts, leave, run, don't, don't go to them. They should be constantly trying to expand their network. Mm -hmm. So what agents try to do is they try to get on meetings with publishers, kind of like when people meet with an agent at a conference to pitch their manuscript. Um, and they try to determine what the publisher is really wanting to see in their inbox. So we make sure we're not wasting their time and sending them stuff that they really wouldn't want. And then we usually often will pitch to a number of publishers and see how the manuscript is gonna fare with them. If we're getting form rejections, they may, it may mean that we need to work on the manuscript a little bit more, but if we're getting a lot of full requests and a lot of um, interest, it's probably a good indication that we're on the right path. So we will always, you know, we'll workshop the manuscript with the writer. We'll make sure that it is ready to go um, and then we'll adjust later. But usually it's you send it in batches and kind of determine from there how it's doing. Hmm. 
Which is a great, uh, great look at just how agents work and even how publishing houses are looking at getting pitches in and commissioning manuscripts. But coming to the completely opposite side of the writing process, you know, since you've been on both sides, how does the writing process work for you? What kind of a pattern do you follow when it comes to your writing? Oh, yeah. No, I love this question. And of course, I always like to add the caveat that there is no one right way to write and that everyone has a different process. So mine is super extra. I don't know if you guys have seen Parks and Rec, but I'm basically Leslie Nope. I'm ridiculous. I'm like super <laughs> crazy. So I, I am a plotter, but I'm kind of like a plotter light. So I have a three act outline I like to follow. And I have very distinct points that I'm like, these are non-negotiable points. These are the ones that I have to have in the manuscript, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then I have a one sentence summary for what I want to happen in each chapter. And then I adjust the outline depending on how it goes. Cause I'm sure we all know as writers that sometimes uh, characters don't listen yes. and you, you might have a completely different outcome in the next chapter than you thought you would. So that is usually uh, my process. And then I have a certain word count goal I want to hit every single day because I usually write books in about the span of a month. Oh, wow, that's really quick. Yes. And I mean, I remember when you turned in your submissions with us and I was like, wow, OK, <laughs> that was really quick turnovers. Yes. <laughs> which was great I was I, your writing process is something that has inspired me a lot as just for my work as well for my writing so um do you want to tell us something about how long form fiction differs from short form fiction because for us you've written um short stories virtually in love after both are uh, really short and you have books such as uh, your trilogies and i know i've seen uh, a new release of yours coming soon so uh, how does how does those differ when you're writing you know short form and long form short fiction oh yeah no and this is a, this is a really great question these are all great questions um <laughs> So I would say short form is different in the fact that you have to condense a lot into a really short space. Mm -hmm. So these uh, the short story collections I have, each short story is, you know, roughly 1,500 to 2,500 words uh, varying. So you have to condense an entire storyline into that. So you, you can't waste any time on excessive detailing or really taking your time to let people get to know the characters. You kind of have to have your very distinctive, like the character is like this, the setting is like this. Okay, we're diving in. Here's the story. Whereas in a long form content, you can obviously take your time a little bit more. You have 60,000 and 90,000 words to work with. Um, so you definitely, you have subplots, you have a, a whole lot more story to work with versus in a short form story, you usually have one plot that follows the plot progression that you often see in stories. So it's definitely different. I actually was super intimidated by short stories um, before, before I turned these in. Those were always the genre that I struggled the most with because I have a hard time kind of condensing everything into a really short period of time but I had a ton of fun it was it was a lot of fun <laughs> writing these it was a lot of fun to edit them as well I mean I, I would never say that you would have a <laughs> problem writing short form fiction For I sure. would have I've read a couple of them on the app and absolutely love virtually in love such a cute series absolutely heartwarming but I think an interesting point kind of adding on to Pranika's question is you know since you've done journalistic writing as well so non-fiction writing and you said you've written poems and other forms of writing as well how do you kind of define your process or how does it do you have like boxes in your mind to define the writing for all three because I feel like you need to get into a completely different headspace Oh yeah, no, writing is a lot like different types of sports or exercise, like every single genre, I guess we're talking about in terms of journalistic fiction or journalistic uh, writing versus plays versus poems, they take a different uh, gear set to implement those. So yeah, I definitely sometimes, especially when I'm doing multiple projects at one time, it's hard to not get things mixed up or not mix up formats or uh, different style guides. So I, I've, I think I've gotten better at it, but you definitely have to kind of switch gears a lot. I'm still trying to figure out how to do it smoothly, 
but I, I would agree, you know, because a lot of times I think people think, oh, you're a writer, you can write anything. But, um, you know, yeah. I, I haven't conquered screenplays yet because screenplays, I'm, I've written stage plays, but screenplays are completely different. And mm -hmm. I haven't figured out the formula for that yet. Oh, so you've written stage plays as well. That's quite interesting. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so actually I'm a theater nerd. I've been a part of 60 different theater productions, have done so since I, I want to say like three years old. Love, actually playwriting is my favorite type of writing. It's just the least lucrative type of writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do it as much, but I, I mean, I've had a couple of my plays have stage readings and performances. Uh, still, I, I've gotten a couple plays published, but haven't gotten big ones published uh, yet, just because it's like, it's a completely different publishing process for plays too, which is, which is interesting, because if you do different types of writing, the publication process may look completely different. Mm -hmm. But yes, I'm, I'm a theater nerd. I, I love all things theater. I'd love to run a theater one day. Um, if, if I have time. So yeah, I, I, I'm a, I, I love drama for sure. <laughs> well, who doesn't? I love drama too. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay, that's, that's very interesting. Wow, you, I, I, you truly have many facets of yes. your personality or writing just generally, yeah. Oh, writing, but yeah. Um, I think actually one thing that I did want to ask was, you know, since you have so many facets of writing that you're into, do you see yourself, what else do you see yourself kind of jumping into and dipping your paintbrush in, in the next five to 10 years? The next five to 10, well, I don't know if it's going to happen next five to 10. I would love to run a publishing company one day. You both are so inspiring to me for um, having started this and, you know, doing so well. I, I really do want to get that going at one point. I especially like doing teen fiction. So I would love to have one kind of geared for that. Um, that's definitely something I want to do down the road. And then um, something, if I finally get the um, energy to go back to school and study, I would love to teach at a university level and kind of, you know, the program I did back in college was so helpful. And I would love to be able to reinvest in young writers, especially. Um, so I don't know, I, I don't know, you know, kind of whatever happens will happen, but I'm, I'm open to a lot of things. Uh, but yeah, just constantly experimenting, trying new things. And I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> wow, very nice. Very diverse. I mean, I, I wish I had it like long term, like oh, what am I going to do in five years? Like, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And like, honestly, so much has happened in the past five years. You never know. Like, you have no idea what's going to happen. So who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. But that brings me to um, one question is that what do you love and hate about? I wouldn't want to specifically talk about the publishing industry, but since we're here, you know, um, with the publishing dialogue, I would like to uh, ask you to, you know, put more effort into what is it that you love and hate about the publishing industry or about also about like maybe um you know screenwriting and theater writing like what is it that um that's you know good and bad about both yeah so okay so tackling the publishing industry first what i love the most is how supportive authors are mm -hmm. um i really love the idea that everyone wants to lift each other up to be lifted up i think that's yes, such that's an right. important thing is mm -hmm. to support one another um what i don't like is the amount of gatekeeping which i'm sure every author is going to answer <laughs> for that just because it's it's hard to be able to find your way in um, and once you find your way in, I mean, it's still tricky to navigate, but I, I you know, there's so many great writers out there that I would, I, I wish they could get in front of the right uh, eyes or, you know, right house for them. So, um, yeah, I would say that's the thing that's my least favorite. In terms of writing, um, I just, the process of creating itself is just so fun. It just, you know, lights up your spirit. It's just it's such a, you know, you, when you do it, you know, like, this is what I'm meant to do. This is, this is how I feel most alive. Um, and then the hardest part is kind of when you hit the middle of any, any project, whether we're talking about plays or poetry or anything, 
is always it's usually kind of like the 70 page rule once you hit page 70 you're feeling like oh this is the worst thing in the world why am i writing this thing um yeah. so kind of navigating past those feelings of kind of writer's block in a way so mm -hmm. um but I, I love the writing process it's hard but it's really good it's like running a marathon at the end of it you feel so good that you finished it but you know at like mile 10 or something you are you know dying from running the marathon <laughs> yeah that's i think the perfect an anal analogy to have um, writing is like running a marathon oh. you're <laughs> in the same process constantly yeah. trying to get there yeah definitely um i think lastly we would want to ask what advice would you give to someone who wants to start in the publishing industry you know whether it's an uh, advice for writers budding writers or someone who wants to be an agent or an editor? No, this is, I always love answering this question. So I would say my best advice is to know that everyone is struggling a little bit. I think it's really easy to see an mm -hmm. author who has a lot of publications under their belt or, you know, has done a lot and think like, wow, she's made it. Um, and honestly, I have really hard days. I have days where I want to quit a lot. I have, I have a lot of writer friends who refuse to let me do it. Um, but um, just know that we're all in this together. Uh, really, if you can build a support network of people who can cheer you on when you're really feeling down. Um, and just honestly keep writing, you know, there's a reason why you feel the, um, you know, fire inside of you to write. There's someone who needs to read your story. So keep writing because uh, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Lovely. Great. Yeah. Yes. I mean, great advice. With everyone struggling out there, I think they're going to be really happy when they watch this video. <laughs> yeah. I think okay. that was a great conversation. Hope thanks for joining us. We had a lovely time chatting with you about the publishing industry and your experience. And yes, Pranika, any last words? No, I, I think I just want to really thank Hope. Thank you for publishing with us and for coming on to here and talking about your experience. I think there's a lot that people will love and enjoy listening to from this dialogue. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Hey, this was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.